Hello, welcome back to The Interface. My name's Alex, and today we're looking at the Honda e MY1. Now, Honda have some marketing material, and they, they say this is their first electric SUV, which is correct. Uh, this isn't Honda's first electric car. Uh, here on the channel last year, we reviewed the Honda e, the small little cute hatchback. Uh, there's a link at the top right corner if you want to check that video out. I was thoroughly impressed with that vehicle, albeit it's limiting range. And this is sort of their a second attempt at an electric car. So we've got an SUV now, which is obviously a popular thing in the UK at the moment. Uh, and this is very expensive. Um, the starting price of the Honda e MY1 is just, just south of £45,000. Uh, it's £44,995. Here I've got today in the advanced trim, it's £47,845 uh, on test. And this has got the optional paint color, which is called Aqua Topaz Metallic, which is 650. In this video, I'm gonna show you what I think about this vehicle. We're gonna take it for a drive and show the interior as well. So first things first, it's based on a new platform called the E colon N Architecture F. So this is gonna be, um, propelling Honda's new sort of B-segment vehicles going forward. Um, so we'll see, we should see more electric vehicles from Honda. Uh, while it may look like the HRV, this isn't really related to the HRV. We've got a different interior, different screen design. Um, this is a bit longer and a bit taller as well than the HRV. But the front end resembles a HRV, which might make it not stand out as much if you're not into that sort of thing. I do like this color. So while in video, it may not come across uh, particularly well, but it does look really good in person, especially if it's a sunny day. It is a pretty grim day today, so it doesn't look that impressive. So what have we got? We've got a water-cooled battery. You've got 68.8 kilowatt hours, which is total. Usable is 61.9 kilowatt hours. Uh, you've got 201 brake horsepower from the front motor, electric motor there. 310 newton meters of torque, 230 pound foot of torque as well. 0 to 60 is dealt with in 7.6 seconds, and there's a 99 mile an hour top speed, which is perfectly suitable for UK roads. So around the front, we've got LED headlights with some quite fancy daytime run lights. I quite like this charge port so there's a button in the interior we can click and this whole door sort of opens which is quite cool We've got a white honda badge so there's some white honda badges all around the car which makes it quite futuristic front mounted camera so like the honda e there was a 360 degree camera system and this is very very easy to park and maneuver in tight spaces so really really good choice there and um, we've got some vents down here some parking sensors but overall it looks pretty unoffensive as i said it looks like the hrv so it's not going to really stand out on the roads but i think it looks quite stylish so looking around the side of the EMY1, again, very similar design to the HRV hybrid SUV. I've got quite a swooping roof here, goes back quite nicely there. Um, got these black accenting all around the windows and the door handles are integrated into the doors, which look quite nice. Again, the trend in some vehicles at the moment makes the whole design look quite sleek. So front door handles, there's no fancy pop out uh, doors at all. So you can click the door handles and they'll unlock and lock the doors if you want to, you've got the key in your pocket. I've uh, got some nice shoulder lines here, so quite, cr quite aggressive uh, creases um, and it's pretty plain when you come down to the doors um, there's a black accent down the bottom there by the sill and there's some chrome there's a bit of a chrome strip there which looks quite nice um, 18 inch alloy wheels on this one uh, there are some other options available there'll be a picture of those on screen now uh, but these look pretty good these come as standard got continental tires um, and they've got They've got a two-tone design, looks like they're quite diamond cut, so it looks quite nice. But overall, what do you think about the design of the EMY1? Do you think it looks really good? Do you think it looks too similar to the HRV? But overall, I think I think it looks similar enough to the HRV and it's not gonna become too offensive and too in your face on the roads. So what's the Honda E MY1 like to drive? Well, first things first, it might be a little bit unremarkable. Um, I've not driven the Honda HRV, so it's related, sort of not related cousin. Um, but when it's compared to the Honda E, Honda's first attempt at an electric car back in 2020, um, this is just feels a little bit unremarkable. Um, don't get me wrong, it's definitely all Honda in here, so everything's really easy to use. We have got that digital uh, infotainment screen for the uh, climate control system, which may affect uh, some people's ability to use it. I do prefer physical buttons down there, but that is just unfortunately what you get with this vehicle. So we've got uh, 201 brake horsepower from the front mounted electric motor um, that should give us about 250 miles of WLTP range um, but I've had this car for a week in the winter so it's five degrees outside it was about four degrees yesterday um, and the lack of the heat pump in the Honda e MY1 has negatively impacted its range its efficiency and everything else that goes with it um, so at the moment I've got the air conditioning system turned on I've got the fan turned on and it says I've got 75 miles of range from 52% battery. I can go ahead and turn the fan off and that jumps to 98 miles. Um, yeah, that's 
that's okay. Um, but the reason for that isn't because it's an electric car and electric cars are bad, it's just that this car doesn't have a heat pump, which means it's very inefficient at generating its own heat. So I'm going to turn it back on because it is absolutely freezing. Um, we can see what's going to happen if we go to the power flow meter. And down here, we can see that the current drive, so I set off a few minutes ago, is uh, 1.6 miles per kilowatt hour, and I've got 75 miles of range, and then turning the air conditioning system off would give me 23 miles of range. And I think that's based on a percentage. So if we, um, if I had 150 miles of range, which I did the other day, um, it would take around 50 miles off my total range. Again, that's just the nature of not having a heat pump. Uh, vehicles like the MG4, uh, I reviewed that last year, video in the top right corner, um, that didn't have a heat pump either. And that was, well, I, I tested in the summer. My comrade from Charging Status, uh, Jim Starling, tested it in the winter, and he mentioned that the, the range was pretty poor in the winter as well. So it, it, is what, it is what it is, just not having a heat pump on a vehicle. Is, it's just going to negatively impact your day-to-day -day experience, I think. Uh, and then you're going to be, again, you're going to be charging it more than you want to. You're going to be, you're essentially wasting money not having a heat pump as well. So the energy you put back in the car, it's just going to be dispersed and not used efficiently. The range and the efficiency aside, everything else about this car is pretty good. We've got, again, we've got this 15-inch touchscreen uh, for things like wireless Apple CarPlay, uh, Android Auto, that sort of thing. And it's quite nicely split up into three different segments. Uh, again, we have covered that in the, the video. So look around the back of the EMY1. This is where it tends to differ from the HRV. So we've got, uh, they've removed the Honda badge. So it's got Honda spelled out in letters, which is an interesting choice. I would have thought that Honda is one of the most recognizable logos out there. Um, got a full width light bar here, so this glows red when you've got the brake lights on. They've got a rear wiper, again, really, really good to see because a lot of cars I reviewed recently which don't have a rear wiper, which is quite annoying. And this works really well. Got the EMY1 badging there, and then we've got the, again, the Honda logo there. And there's a handle under here, so you can click this button. It's a powered tailgate, so that opens up. Quite noisy, the motor. Um, yeah, a bit of a noisy motor there. And we can open it by uh, sort of sweeping our leg underneath the uh, the back of the car there. And then in there, we've got a 361 litres of boot space with the seats folded up. And what Honda have done is prioritised rear leg room versus rear boot space. So they've sort of shifted everything back a little bit. Um, but yeah, the, the rear leg room is really good in there. Uh, with the seats folded down, uh, that's 1,176 litres of boot space. To fold the seats down, all you need to do is go around the each side of the vehicle. And you, all you can do is pull these little handles here and the seats fold down. And there's a little lip there to make sure everything's quite flush. And again, same this side as well. So you can see there's a good amount of space. I've got this plasticky rubbery tray to keep liquids and things sort of from spilling everywhere. But the seats don't fold completely flat, but there's a really good amount of space there. So you can get quite a few items in there if you need to. Underneath this plastic tray, again, like the Honda Jazz, the tray just seemed to scrape on either side of the vehicle, which is a bit of a weird decision. And we can see under here, uh, there's a bit of space for Type 2 charging cable. There's a little bag there for the uh, three-pin charging cable, the granny charger, as it's called. And there's a few little items in there, like the tyre repair kit and some goop for that. To close the tailgate, all you need to do is click on the button here, and it will close by itself. Again, no, motor's a little bit noisy, but it, it does get there in the end. So in the front seats, it's typical Honda stuff, really. Got the usual Honda steering wheel, which is really comfortable. Some really good placement for your thumbs and the buttons are really good to use. This is the first Honda with a big portrait screen. So we've got a 15 inch screen here with support for Apple CarPlay. There's wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto on some models, I think. Um, so it's not always 100% if an Android phone does support wireless Android Auto, but with CarPlay, that is pretty much given. Like any other EV, you press the brake pedal down and you click the power button and it will turn itself on and you get that little nice Honda E type chime, which I really like. And then the screen has come to life here. This is how you control the radio. This is how you control the heating system. So everything is on the touch screen. That might upset some diehard Honda fans because there isn't many buttons really. Uh, and what I noticed with the Honda Civic, the Jazz and the Honda E, they're really, really good um, in terms of how many buttons they've got for different things. But there's a dedicated video live now on the Interface Cars channel. Uh, link is in the top right hand corner and the description down below where I go over everything in depth about this infotainment system, the driver's display, how to use it, every single setting. So if you're interested in the EMY1 infotainment system, definitely check out that video. Down here, typical Honda sort of button style controls for the gears. You've got drive, neutral, reverse, and park. This is really good, I really like it, it's very ergonomic. Again, you pull the button away from you to reverse, you push the buttons down to do different things. We've got the drive mode here, so we've got sport, eco, and normal. Uh, the only thing it does do is make the car a little bit faster, responds better to the acceleration. Um, it doesn't really mess around with the steering, doesn't affect the range at all, so that's not bad. Uh, there's a Honda Park Pilot down here, as well as the brake hold. 
Uh, really, really good on this one. The brake hold, the auto hold is on every time you get back in the vehicle. But other than that, uh, we've got a heated seat, three stage heated seats in the front. We've got a lot of options in this screen here. Um, there's some interesting air vent controls. Um, so you can choose where you want the air directed. Uh, some buttons down here. So we've got uh, parking assist. You can turn off the button to open the charge flap, which I really like. That's such a cool implementation. And you can open up the, the boot as well. Uh, lots of physical buttons here for the windows. You can unlock and lock doors and usual sort of stuff. Um, really good amount of buttons. So we've got automatic light, automatic wipers. This screen here for the driver is really, really clear to use. So there's lots of information there. Again, I'll go over all that detail in the infotainment review. Uh, and there's physical buttons for everything else. You've got heated steering wheel, which is nice because it's so cold today. Uh, and then you've got the media controls this side and then all the cruise control settings. Up here is the blind. So on the front, we do have uh, a physical blind to move. Unlock the rear seats. Got some nice little uh, sun visors here with some built-in mirrors. And then there's a the usual amount of stuff up here. So we've got um, little lights to turn on and off here, SOS button as well. Just in there is the wireless charging phone pads. Uh, you can turn on and off the phone pad by pressing that little button there. And then just in there, we've got a USB-C port and USB-A port. So the C is for charging. The A is for connecting a device for data uh, for using Apple CarPlay wired or Android Auto wired if you want to. And then just in there, it's quite a good size glove box. So there's the manual, quite a chunky book. Uh, in there for this vehicle um, but overall it's a really good design there's a few cheap plastic items everywhere but i think overall it isn't too bad the seats here are electrical so on the passenger side they are uh, manual controlled and then on the driver's side they are electronic uh, there's some nice big buttons here so a, to move the seat back and forth there's a good sort of inch couple of inch long big big slider button here um, so it's really, really good and ergonomic to use. Lots of black piano plastic everywhere. Um, it is, It does get dusty very quickly. This car's only done 2,000 miles, uh, 200 of which were me. Uh, so this car's not real old at all. And there's all these scratches everywhere. You can see some quite big scratches here. There's dust everywhere. So I'm not sure how long this is going to last or hold up over time. But I would prefer to have sort of a more muted material. So just looking at the back seats of the EMY1. We've got a really good amount of space back here. So what Honda have done is they've prioritized rear cabin space as opposed to rear luggage space. That could have its trade-offs uh, with you, but one thing it does allow you is a really, really good amount of legroom. So this seat is set up for my driving position. I'm 5'7", uh, and I've got a really good amount of space here. Passenger seat has got a good amount of space as well. There's a few things back here which seemed a bit un -Honda -y. Uh, first of all is this roof really weird decision i've seen other reviewers mention the same thing so on the advanced model we have got a panoramic sunroof on the front half of the vehicle there's a sliding uh, blind there in the rear half really weird so we've got these pop out things here so what we need to do is clip in either side and this comes out and you've got these weird mesh things these seem a bit of an afterthought um and i'm not really sure why why i've done it but anyway they, they seem relatively well made bit of a weird decision but uh elsewhere in the cabin we've got these uh grab handles here we've got some nice led spotlights again a bit of something that's brought forward from the honda e that was my favorite one of my favorite things about the honda e was the nice sort of uh, spotlights in the rear cabin uh, a lot of piano back plastic so in the front as well there's some bits here which i don't know make it seem a little bit cheap um this area looks quite cheap as well so there's not really any chrome on the air vents again you don't really need it but it just makes it look a little bit cheap uh, there's two usb c ports there which is a really good modern thing to have um some sort of little tray there uh, these seats are really good. You can choose between black uh, vegan leather or white vegan leather. Um, so there's no animal materials in this vehicle, which is good. And then we've got a central uh, little armrest here, which doesn't seem to prop itself back up. just sort of drops there on the seat, uh, which means the cups might be at a little bit of an angle, which may cause you problems with spilling things. But that seems really weird, a bit un um, But yeah, that seems to go back in there quite well. Uh, the headrests seem good. Again, like the HRV. Again, I can't really fault it back here. There's some cheap materials everywhere and for such an expensive car so it's knocking on the door 50 grand um i expect a few better items i just noticed there is a cup holder here so on the other side of the passenger doors in the back there are cup holders so you've got four cup holders in the back of the emy1 and there are some little map pockets here but yeah overall it's not too bad while it's like to drive though you actually sat quite high up um again it's not overly tall like a pickup truck or like a range rover but it's a good sort of height above the road and you can see what's going on quite easily got this Honda, uh, typical Honda steering wheel. So we've got uh, very easy to use controls. It's heated, which is quite nice, like the Honda Civic and other vehicles. Um, and you can't get, really go wrong with this. In terms of other controls, everything's pretty easy to use. We've got physical buttons for everything down here. Um, again, a few things off the touch screen. We've got the gear selector down here. So everything's pretty nice and easy to use while you're driving. You're not looking away from the road, which is obviously quite dangerous. Um, now being an EV, it has got regen. Uh, it's not, unfortunately, it isn't the full on 
uh, one pedal driving we saw with the Honda E. Um, but it's it's sort of like a half-assed attempt to regen, really, I find anyway. So at the moment I'm going 60 mile an hour. I'm going to let off the accelerator. We get a little bit of regen, so we're slowing down quite slowly. Um, but there are some pedals here to control that regen. So if I come again, I can pull the regen uh, pedals there and we'll go slower. Uh, if we accelerate again, the regen system will turn itself off. There we go, after about three or four seconds, it turns itself off. So if you come again to a roundabout, it's not going to be the the same regen level that you're asking for. So again, it's just slowing down a little bit. We pull the regen paddle and it's slowing down slowly. Uh, it's not uh, it's not really that effective, really. So I would like I would have liked to have seen full on one pedal driving that we saw with the Honda E. Uh, I think that would have improved this vehicle no end and making town driving more efficient as well and also easier. In terms of the handling uh, and other driving modes, we've got a drive mode button down here so we can switch between sport. That just makes it more responsive on the throttle and removes some of the regen a little bit. So Eco gives us less travel on the accelerator, less, it's less, less effective, so we're actually using less power. So back in normal mode now, um, it sort of behaves normally. So for those different driving modes, um, the steering's not really doing much different for me. Um, it's, it's still the same amount of play. Usually with sport mode, they get the steering firmed up. But everything's pretty responsive, so, so the handling on the EMY1 is pretty good. Uh, if not a little bit numb, it's not very, it's not very engaging at all. So, and there we go. We've got a warning for ice because it is three degrees. It's pretty cold. So overall, what do I think about the Honda E MY1? Well, at this price tag, I don't think I can wholeheartedly recommend the E MY1. Um, the overall cabin feels like it should be a much cheaper car. And unfortunately, when it comes to actually being an EV and working day to day, I think it's really suffering for the lack of that heat pump. Uh, it's causing a real detriment to the lack of mileage range, um, lack of efficiency and those sort of things. So unfortunately, I don't think Honda have quite hit the mark with this vehicle. Again, their first electric car, the Honda E, was absolutely fantastic. I know that didn't have a heat pump. I know the, the range on that vehicle wasn't very good. Um, but in terms of being a fun car and quite a characterful car, that would really, really hit the mark for me. So for this one, I don't think I can fully recommend it. Um, there are better vehicles out there for the money. Um, something like the Tesla Model 3 is actually cheaper than this car. It has a heat pump, it can go further on a charge, um, and it's got more advanced technology inside, really. If you're after an electric Honda, then yeah, check out the EMY1, go and test drive, see what you think. Um, but in terms of what it's like to drive in the winter and at two degree temperatures, I don't think it's quite uh, what people would be looking for. So that's going to do it for this video, looking at the Honda EMY1, the company's first electric SUV. If you like this sort of video, don't forget to hit like down below and also subscribe for more car reviews. Again, my name's Alex and we'll see you again next time.